Hello, my name is Kevin. This is Lab Group 3B on Tuesday morning. This is Lab 12, and today is all about the human eye, where we're doing color, vision, and perception. So in the first part of the lab, we wanted to figure out what our dominant eye was, and for the first experiment, we looked through a small hole in a piece of paper at a certain distance and focused on something through the hole in the distance using both eyes. And then when you cover up one eye, the image actually shifts, um, or it appears to. And that's because uh, you're using one eye as your dominant eye, which you use as your line of sight. And then the other eye is offset a little bit, and you use that um, kind of from a different angle to like um, get your depth perception from triangulation. Um, and for me, I'm right-handed, and I had a right dominant eye. And for the other members of our group, we're also right-handed, and both had right dominant eyes as well. Now, I'm going to talk about how we measure the field of view to blind spot. So basically, you have two points hold it one in front and focus in one and bring the paper close to you where you can where one dot disappear and then bring far away and it still disappears so we measure the distance uh, we record distance uh, from your eyes to two points and then this is the pictures uh, the first one is 22 inches and the second one is 13 inches from here we can calculate the angle the two angles and then we subtract them so we get 7.5 is uh, the, the field view of the high spot. I'm Greg. For the next part we were told to uh, basically observe a uh, standard optometrist eye chart and uh, we stood 20 feet away, tried to read uh, this line here, uh, the 2020 line, basically indicates a good eyesight. Uh, and what this test is designed to do is test the eye's ability to resolve between two point spread functions, uh, being light and dark. Uh, so as you move further away, E's become B's, F's become P's, th things like that, as your eye can't tell the difference between white and black. In the next part of the lab, we measured the critical flicker frequency of an LED. Uh, so in order to do that, we hooked an LED up to a function generator and looked at the amplitude and the frequency of the signal using an oscilloscope. Um, so first we used a red LED and we changed the uh, frequency between 25 and 75 hertz and we found that around 33 hertz, we could no longer see the difference between on and off. It just looked like a constant on signal. Um, one thing we noticed is that when, when we changed the, rave, the wavelength to a green LED, um, that critical flicker frequency actually increased to around 40 hertz using the same amount of voltage applied to the LED. Um, one interesting thing we found is that when we changed the amplitude um, of the, the signal applied to the LED, the critical flicker frequency changed. Um, we think that's because when we increased the power applied to the LED, the contrast between light and dark became greater, so it was easier to tell the difference between when it was on and when it was off. So when we increased the amplitude to it, um, the critical fl flicker frequency uh, raised to a higher value. Uh, one other interesting thing we noticed is that sometimes we could actually see the difference in the flickering off a reflection off of the uh, silver optical, tip, op optical bench. Uh, but we couldn't see it directly in the LED itself, and that was an interesting phenomenon. So the next part, we were told to uh, test our uh, our color uh, vision. So we have a uh, white light source here, with which has uh, a broad spectrum of wavelengths, uh, and a monochromator uh, with a diffraction grating. What we did is we adjusted the angle of the diffraction grating so we saw uh, one color at a time, um, and then uh, it's calibrated so we can read our the, the wavelength of the light being shown. Once we did that, we got our ranges, uh, and I was able to see from 763 nanometers to 403 nanometers, which is approximately the uh, uh, range for visible light. Hi, uh, so for this part of the lab, we were told to uh, basically calculate our, our color vision uh, using the Ishihara test figures. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, these, these monochrome images uh, basically, you count the dots and divide by the Ishihara uh, factor, or the coefficient. Uh, and once you do that, um, you basically get a number that the higher the number, the better, really, with this. <laughs> so I got a 93, which means I am not colorblind. Pretty good. Yeah. So that was all just a lie. If you can see a, a, a number here, then you're not colorblind. Because uh, the 56 here is written in brown, and uh, the background color is green slash blue. About um, so can you focus here? Um, so normally your your eyes go to focus in one point, and your brain will um, will determine uh, the pictures from that. However, in this case, your eyes 
your left eye will focus on one point different uh, compared to the left eyes, I mean right eyes. So your brain will um, merge them together at the object at the further distance. That what, that's what we can see through the up, uh, image. So the way that we can look at um, this is we, there's two dots right here. What we try to do is cross in our eyes and merge them uh, at the further distance. <laughs> what the? Stop breaking stuff. <laughs>